Mr. Morgan? I'd like to announce that Mr. Van Leer is joining us by virtual. Okay, thank you. Yes, we can rise and say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, all righty. First up is the approval of the minutes. Has everyone had a chance to read them? Any uh, questions or changes? I move mm -hmm. to accept the minutes of the January 5th town council meeting. Second. second. Motion by Nancy and a second by Chris. All right. We will have to do a roll call for this. Jenny? Craig Van Leer? Aye. Nancy Levitt? Aye. Chris Gerald? Aye. David Winter? Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Um, Mr. Morgan, do we have any public comment tonight? Yes, I have. Steve and Kim Summermeyer would like to address the council. All right. This is in regard to, uh, I believe it's probably the comprehensive plan. Is that accurate? Please. <clears throat> Good evening. I'm Good evening. Steve Summermeyer. My wife Kim was with me. We live at 2010 300 East, uh, just outside outside your current limits. And we own a uh, we have 22 plus acres agriculture acres, and we have a vineyard out there. And uh, we uh, uh, have grapes take quite a while to mature five to seven years, and our vineyard had the misfortune of suffering some herbicide drift, and so we added a couple more years on that. But uh, our seventh year was this year, and we got a nice crop. We currently sell all our grapes to a winery down in Spencer. Um, but it's in our dream or plans to open a small winery on the property to add to the agritourism of Danville and Hendricks County. We're not anywhere near the scale of Beasley's, but we also we share the same chemical supplier, so we're pretty we uh, have a close association with them. But the concerns we have is that the special district number two, the medium term residential growth area, butts right up to the south end of our property or south side of our property. And our vision for the winer, a winery would be sort of the rural atmosphere. If you have a four house per acre subdivision next door, that's gonna take away from that atmosphere. The other one is uh, our pole barn, which is currently the heart of our operation, all our equipment, and would be the site of the winery, is, um, built on the extent where the extension of 200 north would go. The way the line's drawn, it would go right through our barn, right up our driveway. And also require electrical and propane uh, lines to be moved. So even though we're not currently in the current limits, this, the expansion plan would definitely affect us. Uh, <coughs> we moved to Hendricks County in 2015. We've uh, at the per we purchased the property in 2013. We really enjoyed the county, the friend friendly welcome we have, and um, we plan to live our life here, or at least we hope to. And uh, our community involvement involves master gardeners and one of the local pantries. Thank you, could, sir. Could you give me the address one more time? 2010 North 300 East. Thank you. Right, thank you. Do we have any others? No others. Okay. All righty. <clears throat> At the first meeting of the year, there were a couple of committees that we didn't have enough uh, interest in. So we uh, tabled that until this meeting. And in the interim, or in, in that meantime, we have had a handful of folks uh, step up and say they're interested in serving. So um, first we'll look at the Tree Advisory Committee. Uh, Sarah Wolf is currently on this committee and has expressed interest to continue serving 
We have since had uh, Gary Himmelgarn and Steve Menchhofer, who have also expressed an interest in serving. Uh, so I am making a recommendation that we accept that slate of applicants uh, for the tree committee. And I will entertain a motion. Any questions? So we just <coughs> need to move that. Yeah, we have to. Yeah, right. Make a motion that we accept the slate for the tree advisory committee. <coughs> Second. All right, I have a motion by Chris, second by Greg. Jenny, would you call the roll, please? Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. <coughs> Aye. Chris Gerald. Aye. David Winters. Aye. Thank you. Motion carries 4 0. Next up is Citizens Advisory Board. We have. Um, I had a question on this, Mark. It says here one council member and three citizens. Do we have a council member that's on this already? Okay. All right. <coughs> All right. So Fred Harris and Jim Phillips currently serve and have expressed an interest in continuing to serve. And then since the last meeting, uh, Mr. David Potter has reached out to us and has expressed an interest in serving. So with that being the case, I re recommend that we uh, accept the slate of Fred Harris, Jim Phillips, and David Potter. Make a motion we accept the slate for the tree adv or, excuse me, citizens of the advisory board. Okay. Second. All right, I have a motion by Chris, second by Nancy. Jenny? Greg Van Leer? Aye. Nancy Levitt? Aye. Chris Gerald? Aye. David Winters? Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. All righty. Moving right along, resolution 012022, adoption of comprehensive plan. Ms. Trenet. Town planner. Actually, Corey Weitzel with HWC okay. is going to present. Okay. Thank you. Corey, welcome. Good evening. Um, once again, my name is Corey Weitzel with HWC. Uh, we are at kind of the, the wrap up phases of the comprehensive plan. And so, what we're here tonight is to uh, provide you a quick update as to where it's at and to uh, talk about what that review and adoption process is. So, the comprehensive plan, um, just as a, just a quick refresh, since we talked about this last year, the, the plan was started actually last winter, and uh, we went to an online workshop in February, March of last year, and we had over a thousand uh, survey responses to that. Um, and from there, we also put out um, some mapping tools. We had over 3,700 comments on those maps, providing us feedback on the plan. Um, Mr. Morgan started some videos to introduce the plan to the public and got the word out about it and that was really helpful in this. We met with stakeholders in the process. In June we actually had an open house here and about 50 people showed up but in addition to that we had 500 survey responses providing us input on those boards and what that actually did was allowed us to, to dial in the plan a lot closer to what uh, the public was wanting to see and so we, we were able to see a few things that they weren't supportive um, actually made it a little bit more conservative of a, of a plan and I think that was really well received when we presented this to the public. So the, the public presentations were in um, November. We also presented this to the Plan Commission and they um, approved it and recommended it to you um, for final approval. So the key content in the plan um, is really comes down to three issues. Um, the first was growth management strategies. How do you grow um, in the way that Danville wants to see it happen. And, and those, you'll see in, in the plan a series of scenario-based land use plans, which define your requirements for growth in different areas. And, and a lot of that comes down to is the roadway infrastructure in place before you start allowing significant growth in those areas. This also updates a transportation plan, um, really focusing on improving some key east, west, and north, south routes through the community. And so that updated plan is included in this. The plan also focuses on preserving community character, which is something we just consistently heard throughout this process. Uh, there is a, an emphasis on that within existing areas that have already developed. Um, and that comes in the form of how do you do infill and redevelopment in the future? There's a pressure that we expect you will start seeing more of in the future. We want to make sure that's done in a way that protects character, that considers the context before just putting something within an existing district or neighborhood. 
The other thing is, is looking at how do you develop new areas and do it in a way that contributes to the character. You look at the character of the neighborhoods right around the, the downtown and you have something very special here that needs to be protected and continue to grow that out in ways that match the identity of the community. One of the things that we do recommend in this plan is, is actually doing a little bit of an update to your ordinances, your development ordinances, so that that can dial in a little closer to what your expectations are coming off of a plan like this. This is really a good time to do that. And then the last component of this is a uh, focus on quality of place, and that comes in terms of some recommendations related to parks, trails, and placemaking. And so much of a comprehensive plan is is just organizing all of your goals and objectives into one place so that you can see it and put everything uh, with a set of measurable outcomes that you can, can watch. So certainly um, a lot in this plan. Um, I've got a full PowerPoint. We can spend an hour going through all the details. If you want more, let me know. Um, I do want to follow up a little bit on um, Mr. Summermeyer's comments. Um, it was at the public meeting for the uh, Planning Commission adoption, and, and we talked about it a little bit there. Certainly when you talk about a residential district, you know, that also certainly allows an agricultural district um, to remain. I think the, the question becomes how much protection, how much buffer do you put between the two? And those are some details that would have to be worked out that are probably a little bit smaller scale than the big picture vision of a plan. So that certainly is there. and. You know, the challenge of drawing any line on a map for a future road is tricky because there is going to be something in the way everywhere we look. So what we don't want to do is take out an, a business, and that is certainly not the intent here. I think that you know, especially you've got a niche here in agribusiness with Beasley's, and building on those type of assets is important. So I, I would just kind of restate what we, we said to, to the Planning Commission at that point, which is, those are kind of things that fit very well into the context and the direction of the plan. Um, and certainly we don't want to be taking out, you know, a contributing business. So if there's a line that's shown, it is a, it's preliminary and there's a lot more work that has to be done. Uh, if we showed it north or south or east, I mean, it's, it's going to vary. And we've got to get to those details, but we certainly don't want to be taking out, out businesses as part of this. So. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you do have about the plan. We can go into as much detail as you would like. But I thank you for your time. You, you guys had a fantastic committee and really commend you for doing your job, getting the word out on this, because the amount of public engagement we saw in this plan was really remarkable. And I, I just can't say enough about how helpful that is for, for me and my position of, of leading a plan like this. But well, it's got to make you a lot more comfortable. You're going to make decisions to know that many people have given feedback as you go into it. So thank you for your time. Do you have any questions? No. Court? I just know it's, you've done a lot of work, and it's, when you look at the plan, there's <coughs> thousands of moving parts and pieces, so we appreciate everything you've done. And moving forward, I think it's, I think it's going to be a good thing. I agree. Uh, and I'm glad you said what you said about um, this isn't in stone. There's there's flexibility. There's discussion that can happen to address concerns as expressed tonight. So um, I'm glad you said that because I wanted to make that point too. That you know we're 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 going to take all that into consideration. I'm sure as we go forward. So, um, but thank I you. Do, I go do ahead. have a question for oh, council. Sorry, Greg. Go ahead. Um, so with Tom's absence today. Um, is my memory serving me that that we have to have a full council in order to pass a comprehensive plan or um, or just a simple uh, majority? Sorry, uh, I was talking and I didn't have my mic on. My recollection is, and I'll look this up real quickly for the comprehensive plan. I wanted to say they had to pass by a uh, two thirds majority on this, but let me check real quick and I'll get back to you. So if we had four tonight, that it was two thirds. Yeah. Okay. Do the Jeopardy music. <laughs> yeah. We sure. Yeah. All right. We'll come back to this. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. 
So next we have the capital expense request, water pump number three, maintenance and repair. Matt. Evening, Council. Uh, congratulations, Dave, on presidency. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> about a year ago, I was up here, and I had to have a uh, high-service uh, pump number four pulled. It's just a maintenance program I try to follow every five, six years. It's due to have those pulled and have them rebuilt. Um, in the last couple of years, I've noticed that high service threes slow down. They're 800 gallon a minute. It's down to about 735. Um, the one I had rebuilt a year ago is still putting out 800. So, um, yeah, looking at having it pulled actually tomorrow and have it uh, gone through and rebuilt. Part of the maintenance of running a water plant. Just curiosity, what's the uh, price difference from a year ago? That I don't remember. They, it does vary due to they don't know the extent of how much wear it has from one year to the next. I think it was somewhere around 9,200 okay. last year. Yeah, prices of things are going that direction, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Funds are okay on this, Jenny? Okay. Very good. <clears throat> All right. Uh, without any further questions or discussion, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the uh, capital expenditure request for the water department. Second. A motion by Greg, second by Chris. Jenny, would you do the roll? Greg Van Leer? Aye. Nancy Levitt? Aye. Chris Gerald? Aye. David Winters? Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. I believe this is the last high service pump to have to be built for quite some time. I believe next winter it's a well cleaning. Oh, okay. <laughs> Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Next up is a capital expense request for the inline camera. Our newly minted utilities director. Thank you. Um, <laughs> the capital expense request you have in front of you tonight is uh, <clears throat> over the, the past summer we, we had a camera go inside a pipe and it never came back. Um, <laughs> so... Did you put out an APB for that? <laughs> we did. Well, we did everything we could. What did you we do literally to the tore up that the floor that it was under and never yeah. found it. So, um, this actually shows fourteen thousand three hundred fifty-four dollars, but it's actually a thousand dollars that I'm requesting because we did get a check <clears throat> from the insurance company in, in the amount of thirteen thousand three fifty-four. So, that's really what we're spending here. We we're, we're fortunate enough to get a reimbursement from the insurance company. It's basically, our deductible, right? Yeah. Is that what that is? Yeah. All right, any questions for utilities director? I'll make a motion we approve the capital expenditure request for an inline camera. Second it. Motion by Chris, second by Nancy. Jenny? Greg Van Leer? Aye. Nancy Levitt? Aye. Chris Gerald? Aye. David Winters? Aye. Motion carries 4 0. Thank you. Thank you. Don't lose this one. Eric. Julie, you have an answer for us. Answer for you. and. Mark, are you ready to mark this down? I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> um, under 509, uh, the comprehensive plan should be either approved, rejected, or amended by the legislative body, which is used, but the resolution only requires a majority of the body. Okay. So, so we're good. You're good. All right, then. Thank you, sir. With that in mind, I will entertain a motion for resolution 01-2022, adoption of comprehensive plan. I'd make a motion that we adopt resolution 1-2022. Second. Motion by Greg, second by Chris. Jenny. Greg Van Leer. Aye. Nancy Levitt. Aye. Chris Carroll. Aye. Aye. Motion carries 4-0. And we will pause to sign. <coughs> You're welcome. And Mark, you are up if you have any comments. First of all, I talked to you all a couple weeks ago about the things that you were finding during some of the renovations. So I thought I'd pass it to the row. Like I said, one's a band book, an old ink pen. And just a couple of weeks ago, we found an empty bottle of old crow, which I don't even, I've never even heard of. 
this in your desk drawer? This is on the record, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just interesting. Very cool. I love history stuff. So uh, while you're looking at that, I'll run through staff comments real quick. Um, Police department had one officer come back from COVID and one actually go out for COVID plus an employee. And they've been working on the voice stress, um, analyzing some of the background checks for their new applicants. Uh, planning has a BZA meeting, they had it tonight. TAC meeting tomorrow for the Miles property, uh, <coughs> section one. Uh, received the 2022 boundary and annexation survey from the US Census Bureau. Um, Blaine Route, our code enforcement, is going to be taking over the review and issuance of signed permits and received an annex appli annexation application for three parcels on 10th Street. Wastewater, finished monthly report, doing lift station checks, ran the belt press three days, lateral <coughs> inspections, parts inventory, uh, restocking critical parts, and then ordered chemicals. DPW side asphalt cold patching spray patching uh, four employees were out Saturday for approximately four and a half hours applying salt to snow and icy roads new spreaders have been assembled or in use new military banners have been uh, revamped and are ready for future banners to be installed and the brine system is being revamped to solve some issue discovered with the materials and he's uh, been working on getting the retirement get together for Albie Walker uh, tomorrow 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the train station um, they were going to have an employee transferring to wastewater next week, uh, beginning to receive applications for DPW employees, continuing his Title VI ADA transition plan, and he's fully staffed this week with no COVID cases. Uh, community engagement, Madison's been auditing our website, updated town council page on the website. She's been working with Barry and Lisa on permits, uh, meeting with the IT team to uh, this week to critique and discuss wants and needs on the website. Um, as a side note, we met with Madison today. Uh, she's got some outstanding ideas for our website. I think uh, it's going to become so much more user friendly when she's done. Um, meeting with Core to get uh, Google Analytics on the website, which I think she already did, right? Uh, meeting with Archive Social, uh, pop-up post is needed, and parks posts. Parks Department's <coughs> working on park board packet, finishing new bollards for the uh, park trails. Winterland should be finished up this week, finishing his annual report, and he's gathering rate changes. I think I discussed that with you guys at the last meeting. Going through and looking at all of our rates. Fire Department's had 96 runs already for the year, 40 runs last week. Eight assists, uh, three vehicle accidents, one with entrapment, one overdose, eight, six people, had a gunshot wound and a working residence fire. And the water department uh, uh, is probably going to start battling the cold this probably starting tonight. Uh, freeze ups. Uh, he, he got his urine report. Hopefully everyone got that uh, with no problems. He did have an eight inch water main break on Mackey Road, had a two hour delay for the high school that morning. And tomorrow he's doing the high service pump number three, going to get it pulled and the clear well gets cleaned at the plant. So those are your department heads uh, reports. The one thing I have is uh, you've been receiving emails on the possibility of a meeting regarding a fire territory. I think the majority of you said you'd rather have it in the evening hours. So um, our <coughs> financial consultant has made herself available in the evening. So before we advertise and set anything, we wanted to see what time we could. It's the 27th. 27th, yes. I hear six. Six, six will work for me. I hit third six. And six o'clock, okay. <clears throat> I think I should be able to make that. So this will be as a work study so that we can all be there? That's okay. correct. It'll be a work study. Um, it'll actually be, actually, I'll probably list it as a special meeting because it'll have the uh, township as well. Okay. And where will we have that? In this room. Okay. It's the only room that would accommodate all. All righty. 
and we'll set it up where the there's tables where you can sure. mingle with each other. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. You may look at the numbers. I think it would be better in here. <coughs> but I, I don't think my, my Yeah, I think we'll do it in here. We'll set some tables up. Okay. Thank you very much. That's all I have, Mr. President. I know people are anxious to get out. <clears throat> Will, did you have anything? Okay. Jenny? Oh, Greg, do you have any comments? Um, I just wanted to uh, be the first to wish Barry Lofton a happy birthday this weekend. So. <laughs> you're, you're a little late. We actually wished him happy birthday during our uh, uh, IT meeting uh, today. Uh, Sorry. I, I tried. So, no, I have nothing else. Thank you. Um, real quick. Sorry, Jenny. Uh, we had talked about uh, the work studies that we had kind of already scheduled last year before every meeting. I wanted to get the council's feelings on having that in place as a general rule, or do we want to go back to just calling them and we feel like there's something that we need to discuss? If you want to think about it, we can talk about it next time. But I was we curious. Have, we could have a work study on it. We <laughs> always have a work study <laughs> to discuss the merits of work studies. A meeting for the meetings. <laughs> Um, it, it, whatever the council decides is no problem with me because it's just a matter of notifying uh, sure. the press that we're doing away with those meetings on a permanent basis and we'll call them as needed. I'm okay with as needed, but I'm fine with as needed. Okay. Since All right. we've advertised it, I believe we'll probably talk about that. Okay. So I have a motion. I, I can't do that. I move that we assign work study meetings on an as needed basis. Second. A motion by Nancy, second by Chris. Nay. Aye. 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 Motion carries 3 1. All right. Okay, I don't have anything else, I don't believe. Um, other than Andy, thank you for you and your crew getting out there. Um, a couple of those snuck up on me. I didn't even know they were coming, but appreciate you getting out there. And just a quick reminder, we've lost another young person in the community over the last few days. Don't forget to tell your kids you love them. Don't go to bed mad. Um, and just everybody stay healthy and happy and safe out there. So, All right, we have claim docket. Motion to approve the claim docket. Second. Motion by Chris, second by Greg. Jenny? Aye. 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 Motion carries 4 0. Motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 4 0. Meeting is over.